Is that a cable tie in your hair? No. Bad times when you have to use a cable tie to, to keep the hair back like. The sun is shining and the thought of silage is clearly on everyone's mind just at the minute. Uh, we haven't had just as many videos from my farm because pretty much I've been doing a side project on the main farm flick site for the Ag Life series. But we'll try and keep as many blogs as I can in between times it's just a bit hectic doing the other filming and trying to keep the blogs co uh, coming. The grass growth rate this year has been a bit slow. We're not just panicking but I want to get the big girl ready to go as soon as the grass is there. Uh, big bud, brother-in-law Paul, he is down to, to do his magic as my hands are rubbish at that carry-on. Paul was down oh, maybe could be six weeks ago. Again, another mechanical problem. Digger wouldn't go. Wasn't quite enough in that to make a full blog, but I've a wee bit recorded, so you can see it now. I have been beat. I have spent all morning trying to mess about to get the digger going. I stopped and uh, wasn't getting diesel. Messed about for long enough. Had my brother-in-law on the phone and he talked me through what I was doing. Thought I had her going again and she stopped again, but this time I haven't been able to get her back on the road. So give him a call again, he's down. So we'll go and check in with him and see if he has a bit more success than I do. It's a bad job when he has to bring his own spanners down, like can't even get him spanners. I spent an hour and a half messing about this morning at this carry-on with him on the phone telling me what I was at. Thought I was winning when I had her going and she stopped on me again. This is making me feel not as bad because she stopped on him too. I need to figure out what's going on soon to keep, keep the digger going and keep old Tom happy. Mighty cap system for the diesel tank. None of that's fell off under the tank. I thought at that time we just put a big piece on. Well, as long as that is one big chunks fell in and not a lot of wee bits. Is that for the rubbery bits that you found? Like that's our rubber, it's different sort of stuff. It was plastic e robbery, but it wasn't like it would have been thinner sort of stuff, you know. Not sure how you get this thing out. I take it you'll never reach that. We could reach it. I don't really fancy. Put my hand in. You know, I cleaned that out before. Reached in, scooped out. But your, your arm's right under your armpit. Just not that keen, put my hand down to that amount of diesel. Diesel be bad for you. <laughs> Drinking it's alright. The man sends me to get him gloves and come back, and he already has it out. So the question is, well I was about to slag him and said whose bright idea was it to use that for a gasket, but then I need him to come back and help, so I can't slag him too much. So in truth, the digger is nothing actually to do with me. This is completely old Tom's carry-on. Must have been seven or eight years ago he finally decided he wanted a digger. And this is what we came up with. The, looking back, we are in this farm about 31 years. If he'd have bought it right back then, that would have been the job at the start. There's that much digger work and stuff needing done. A digger's always useful at a farm, but it's, like a, it's a luxury at the same time too. So I've only actually driven that thing once. Wouldn't be fit to level nor dig a hole or pretty much anything. I can't drive it, can't dig a hole with it, I can't even fix it. So it's a lot of point me having a digger about, but between Paul getting it going and Daff it and about with it, I was cleaning up the backs of a wee the ditches there. So the digger he ended up going for at the time, obviously, is a Hitachi EX120. She's a dash one, she's an agey girl, 
the Dash ones boys said that they were the they were the bomb, they were bulletproof. And to be fair, yes, with a wee bit of footer and silly things like that can happen to any any digger. Which is alright, go on out girl. My friend's dad actually had one and I don't know how, but he managed to keep it in the Loch Ness. And he was lucky it coped the right way that he was fitting to get out of the cab. But whenever they got it pulled out of the lock, they got her fired up, which worked the very best. And you need something that's going to stand a lot of abuse to be about our place, like. Right, will she start? She is alive and kicking. Dad will be a happy man now. He can come back and play with his wee toy. And I'm going to move a bit further away in case Paul decides to clunk me with the, the bucket. Once again, I'm relying on somebody else to pull me out of a hole. So I'm going to say thank you, Paul, for coming down and helping me out. Although it was him who decided to use that rubber as a gasket at the time, so really, he, he was the man that had to come to fix it. I think it's about time I go and get something else done. It's enough digger play for me for the day. So I can see Paul eyeing up another problem we have, the drawbar. Still never has been fixed in the trailer, but that's maybe not today's problem. So what are you going to do to the harvester today, Paul? Or what needs done? Well, we'll drop the, we'll drop the pick up first, and we'll lift the feed rollers off, and we'll start to strip out the knives, and uh, we'll have a go at that first and see how we get on. So we've new knives sitting. How many knives do we run in this harvester? Four. Well, you can run over two if you want. How many knives can you take? Twelve. I think it's like twelve. If you really want a chopper. But four is four su sufficient. Well, it's better than any. Better than any. Anybody with a wagon, sure. Uh, what was the? You know what? There's no point me asking him questions now. We'll start and it, and he can tell us what he's doing as we're doing it. So. because with the boss man actually doing a bit of work today too so plenty going on here so we'll fill him a load a minute and then we'll get back to the harvester Oh, I could flame and do with them. I was trying to scrape out the shed of cows there and I couldn't push the stuff. I was just, it was a bit firmer and wherever it was sticking to the ground, the wheels, I, I just literally had to push the boom out with the brake on. What would you do without that telescopic? I know, without that telescopic <laughs> reach and pull job, I'd be baiting like. That was warm today, sweat is. I see Paul's admiring my 7 8, 10 there. I don't need to put ideas in his head. I think he's going to bid me. He's better looking as I. You could be a while before. I ah, might bid you, but you wouldn't like what he bid you. <laughs> <laughs> right, 
Right, we will get back to the harvester and you will get back to the dung. Yes, sir. Yes, boss. Keep her lap. We've got her moved under the shed. It's kind of warm out there. So at least you're in a bit of shade. So what is it you're going to be doing here then, Paul? Well, I'm just going to strip her down. Uh, <coughs> First of all, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take this guard off. We'll, we'll take this, this, uh, these feed roller unit, upper feed roller unit off. Uh, which is fairly straightforward just to stack the big spring underneath here for the, the double feed roller tension. Uh, take the side uh, plates off and that whole thing to just lift, lift, lift out. I'll just let us get in add a wee bit on there to work. Right, so I'll just give you more space to well, get at the knives. Maybe you're working on four knives or maybe you're doing all the knives. May as well spend a bit of time. You'll more than save the time you lose by taking this off, you know, in the long run. Just then the shear bar. What's wrong with that? I will. <laughs> well, it, this was never right since she was here. It, it was sort of cobbled together with bits and pieces and it was always the way it, it was. And it always gives trouble and it always sort of shakes itself loose. So we're gonna get, we're gonna strip that as well. Take the bar out, take the, the shear bar support here. There's, a, there's actually there's a bolt broken, uh, snapped off in that. So I'll have to get uh, tap, or pulled out and re, re, re-threaded just. Uh, and then we'll have to get a lot of bits, the proper bits and pieces, and get the whole thing assembled the way it is, and hopefully that'll. A few wee cones and washers. Sort of cups and cone pieces and washers, and, and just just to, just the way it's supposed to be. And hopefully that'll save any any trouble. So now the question I have for Paul is why wasn't that done ten years ago? <laughs> well, you see, whenever you buy a machine, you don't want to just go out and spend spend all the money you have on putting it exactly right, just in case you miss something critical. You go out to the field and the whole thing blows up on you the very first day. So you kind of have to take it easy for a year or two just to see if it's going to be worth spending money on. Uh, and I guess it's just done not too bad, that sort of thing. So you can sort of justify to yourself maybe spend a bit, of, bit more money on it. So we're just trying to get this out wire again. If that, if that wire wasn't in there, that uh, the start spring would just work its way loose. And you'd lose all your feed roller tension, so we just have to undo the tension. It's just a matter of winding this thing off. Usually you're doing this whenever, whenever the, whenever the, it's just, there's a shear to shear bolt. You need to wind this thing off to get the tension off the feed roller to pull the grass out. But luckily, but today, because there's no grass in it, it's not that bad. There's slack already. I agree with Paul's theory on you don't want to go out and spend a fortune of money fixing up the machine and then find something else is majorly wrong that she's just a pile of scrap that you've wasted money on. We've had the harvester long enough that I, I still think it should have been done a year or two ago. But she's going to be running perfect this year, Paul, isn't she? She's every year. See, the problem is the wee things, the niggles, he knows what to keep an eye on and if she starts to go off a bit, he's on the ball, jumps out. Gets her sorted in the field. I'm not so smart that way, so I'll just drive on until she breaks, which keeps me then from driving the harvester. I'd be reluctant to drive it whenever he's not about. But she's going to be running like a new machine, and I can bore and rack and smash and tear away with her. The reason that harvester ended up here was because of Paul. We had bought a wee Mangali 30, and then he'd spotted this on, was it Gumtree? I think it was. Uh, so Gumtree, Curse, he's seen that. There was no pictures or nothing of it up, but we went and looked at it anyway and brought it home. I haven't been, I used to be a done deal holic and was on it constantly looking for different bits and pieces. Haven't been on it in ages for some reason. Well, it was actually, I was doing the VAT the other day and didn't want to do the VAT, so got distracted and done deal and I found three harvesters on it. And I am annoying myself thinking I should be buying a a second one is a spare, or a second one, so me and Paul can both be out left and then just be blowing grass all around us.
he, he was too thrown to let me even attempt to help him. Had to, had to prove a point. <laughs> Saying, he's like Samson, all the strengths in the hair. If I cut the hair off him, then he'd be beat. So what, what is the function of a shear bar and a harvester? Well, a knife has to cut it on something. Uh, you know, if it's a pair of scissors, you have two knives cutting against each other, so a knife has to cut it on something, so a shear bar is what it cuts against. If there's no shear bar, I well, suppose a knife could be doing anything, it could just be pulling the grass through if it's not if it's not coming sort of thick and heavy. Well, is a shear bar, is that hardened steel or...? Oh aye, well you'll see here. Well, there's a hardened edge. So there's the... That sort of bit from there. There's your hardened edge. See that edge is done, you see? So it's, it's worn until it's through the hard bit. Just onto the round there. So that's your, that's your edge that it's sheared against. And the thing is, you see, shear bar, I don't know what price they are, they're not, not that cheap. But how much diesel are you going to save? You know, a, a nice, good shear bar makes it easier to cut, easier in fuel. But at the same time, if you're going to spend, I don't know, £500 a shear bar, it'll take you a lot of years before you'll save that back in diesel from having a slightly worn bar. Like not, the, the last person's obviously wore this, run this side and touch it around. It could be a long time before that gets to this stage. So yes, it'll not be, it'll not cut as nice on that, as that. But is it worth spending, I don't know, 500 pound, whatever it might be on it? Sure if you're a contractor, that, I don't know, that might only last you a few weeks until it's completely done. But about, but about a, an ordinary farmer's place, you could do a few years. There's one knife. So you see the hardened edge again? The shear bar. So it's pretty much right back on this side. A wee bit of life on this side. That's one of the, probably one of the better ones. The problem is they're all different stages of wear. There's a lot of life in that boy. Then what's that? But that, that could do for a spare. Aye, there's, not, there not. should be enough in that because if you, if you put one on the spare, you'd have to grind the other ones down to the same length, would you? Well, you, you no, no, you've slots there, you see. That's why you've a slot, you see, so you can, you can, you have to adjust them. That's that's the time-consuming part. You know, you put them in. Um, you wind your shear bar right right back, I suppose, as far as it'll go, and then you adjust the knives. You, you so the the shear bar, you have a gap, and you want. You want them all on the same gap. Now over time, as you sharpen them, they will all be the same. But at the start, you have to manually set that gap with each knife. Just knock it back and forth until you get it. Just, just where you want it. And as I say, that's that's why there's slots there, so you can you can position the knife, position each knife to the shear bar. Then she's, I take it, she's going. Is she meant to be at an angle like that, or is that just the way she's worn? Because they're in a sort of a. They're not straight across the drum because they're at an angle. There's a nice wee curve on them. You can see that. There's sort of a twist from, from back from one side to the other, which is probably what, what makes them dear to make. Oh, there's a bit more chump on her than the new ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be a long, long time about right here. There's another the boy there as well. That's your sort of baffle thing. It sits under the knife. It should be a wee edge in that. It should be just the knife sits on top of that. It should be a wee edge just underneath that, just right through the grass bag. But you sort of end up with this build up of stuff anyway, which kind of nearly does the same job. But. So there's all your combinations for putting your your knife block support blocks so you can. Fill them with knives if you want. So is everywhere you see bolts there, you could put a knife on them? Mm -hmm. uh, the bolts, they're, they're, that's, that, that wee touch there is from the, is from the sharpening stone. Uh, it's probably a sign that she should have been changed a wee while ago. Um, just uh, as the, the stone has, as the, stone, as the blade has gone around, it's just been sharpened, she's been touching that as well. Uh, but again, just because of the makeup of the knives on her, um, some of the some of the knives with with a less lesser of an edge on them have to push right out 
to, to set, the, set the same space to the shear bar as some of the knives that are more wearily. That, that knife could have been knocked further out and the shear bar pulled, pulled back. If you pull the shear bar back with the knives that run her, some of the knives to stay aware on them wouldn't be able, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to reach. Um, so the kind of were all set to, to accommodate sort of the worst knives. So but then of course as as they've worn down, they've started to take the heads off the the uh, the bolts as you can see there. Uh, so that's that's why I was use the the six sided the impact socket six side. Make sure we get a good catch on it and get them out the first time. So if it was your harvester, how many blades would you want to run? I don't know, maybe I'm only going for four because it's a cheaper option. But she cuts the four blades for us cut, I don't want too short a, a chop length. So for me, it seems to work well. But I'm sure all of you will have your own opinions out there. How many knives you should be running in your self-propelled? Drop a comment below. Don't comment, don't you can't. You have no right to comment if you have a wagon. I've got a new sharpening stone as well. So the old one's kind of been... That could have been a wee bit of life in her yet. Well, <laughs> the problem is you need something to grip it. And the time it grips is right, that'll protrude out the bottom of the, the holder. So that'll, again, that'll do a long time. What price was the stone? I can't mind it. It wasn't just, it didn't seem just so dear compared to the knives. 60, 70 pound maybe something, I can't remember. Paul's going to abandon me. And the big question, when are you finishing her? Ah, wait your two time today. The day I am mowing grass, Paul will still be tinkering at the harvester. Any time. This, this year, for what one year, one year only, can we be ready before the mower's on? I'm always ready. I, but the, you're maybe ready, the harvester's not ready. Uh, right, that concludes that. There's other stuff to do and he's abandoning me, so uh, I'll leave that for him to, to fix. Don't forget, thumbs up, and we'll see you again.